Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to address a joint session of the legislature. Working together, we have had great success in moving Pennsylvania forward, but we still have a lot of work to do. I am grateful to President Scarnati, to Speaker Terzai, Leaders Corman, and Reed, and Dermody, and Costa, for your willingness to make the fight against opioid addiction a priority, and for your work in the past to address this crisis. The Center for Rural Pennsylvania, chaired by Senator Gene Yaw, has worked on solutions to this opioid epidemic since 2014. The work the center has undertaken has positioned many pieces of legislation for passage that we can now finalize. Senator Wozniak and Representative Skvulic and Everett have also been strong voices in this effort. I'm also thankful to the chairs of the HOPE Caucus, Representatives Ed Ganey and Aaron Coffer, as well as Senators Gene Yaw and Jay Costa for their laser focus on fighting this opioid epidemic in communities throughout Pennsylvania. I'd also like to acknowledge Representative Gene DiGirolamo for his passion and his work to fight addiction. Thank you. Many members here have provided thoughtful legislation and innovative ideas to fight opioid addiction. We are all aware of the opioid epidemic facing Pennsylvania, a public health crisis the likes of which we have not before seen. Every day, we lose 10 Pennsylvanians to the disease of opioid addiction. This disease does not have compassion or show regard for status, gender, race, or borders. It affects each and every Pennsylvanian and threatens entire communities throughout our Commonwealth. The disease of addiction has taken thousands of our friends and family members. In the past year alone, we have lost over 3,500 Pennsylvanians, a thousand more lives than the year before. And we are not alone. According to the Centers for Disease Control, prescription opioid overdose deaths in the United States have quadrupled since 1999. Families have identified loved ones. People have buried their childhood friends. It's a crisis that has been building for years right here in Pennsylvania and again all across the country. Addiction too often is an invisible problem. People with substance use disorders and their families, they fear the stigma of addiction which keeps them isolated and unwilling to ask for help. And the consequences therefore fall to law enforcement, to jails and prisons and to understaffed treatment centers. But in Pennsylvania, the problem is visible in many ways. It's visible in the lives lost, the families broken, in the communities that have been shaken. It's visible because parents have come to us, every single one of us, asking for help. It's visible because the members of this building listened and made the fight against opioid addiction a priority right here in Harrisburg. And because you have brought the voices of your constituents here, it is now possible for us to fight this, this scourge with every tool we have. And that's what we're going to do. We are going to take a stand against the vicious disease of opioid addiction. This past year has moved from conflict to civility. We have achieved some very good things working together. And while achieving these things, we have made fighting the opioid epidemic a top priority. And I've traveled the Commonwealth with Republicans and Democrats. And we've listened to our fellow Pennsylvanians. We've all held parents' hands as they've cried. We've hugged those in recovery who've risen above the disease. And we've heard their stories. Parents and those suffering from the disease of addiction have broken down, telling us about the difficulty of finding treatment options. We heard them. So together, in this year's budget, we increased funding for treatment centers by more than $20 million that will create 45 centers for treatment allowing nearly 11,000 Pennsylvanians to receive care. These centers integrate behavioral health, primary care, and when appropriate, evidence-based medication-assisted treatment. And by expanding Medicaid to provide nearly 700,000 Pennsylvanians with health care, we've also provided treatment to 63,000 Pennsylvanians battling the disease of addiction who previously did not have access to care. 
We are doing more to treat this like the public health crisis it is. Doctors and other medical professionals have voiced frustration at the inability to find centralized prescription information. We heard them. So together, we redesigned the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, a database created by the legislatures through a bill authored by Senator Pat Vance. The online database allows prescribers and pharmacists to monitor who is obtaining opioids and where and how often they were prescribed. This critical tool will support professionals in identif identifying patients struggling with the disease of addiction and get them the help they need. Police and first responders, well, they asked for more tools to save people. We heard them, too. So together, we have made opioid overdose reversal antidote, naloxone, available to Pennsylvanians, including local police departments. Last year, Physician General Dr. Rachel Levine signed an order enabling all Pennsylvanians to access naloxone without a prescription at their local pharmacy. And since November, November of 2014, more than 1,500 opioid overdoses have been reversed by local and state police officers. As York District Attorney Tom Carney said of law enforcement officials, this disease was not their public health issue, but many of them made it their fight, and for that, we owe them a great debt of gratitude. Ordinary Pennsylvanians wanted to know how they could help. We heard them. So together, we're helping communities properly dispose of unused and unwanted prescriptions through a drug take-back program. There are nearly 520 take-back boxes located at police stations all across Pennsylvania, and we have collected and destroyed over 145,000 pounds of prescription drugs, including opioids. Together, <laughs> together, we have taken important steps to stop this crisis in Pennsylvania. But we have more to do. Over the past six months, I've sat with many of you in roundtables with families, law enforcement, and medical professionals to discuss the opioid epidemic in Pennsylvania. But in addition to the stories we have heard, every one of us is likely to have a personal story they can recount by heart. And so many of these stories are the same, no matter how different the storytellers are. Just a few weeks ago, I was chatting with a friend who asked me if he could give me a letter. I asked if he just wanted to talk, but he had trouble composing his words. When he gave me the letter, I was surprised to learn that his own child had recently died from the disease of addiction. He was heartbroken, but he thanked all of us for the work we've done to help people suffering from the disease of addiction, and he implored us to do more. This is one example of the far-reaching effects of the opioid crisis. This crisis, again, reaches into every population. It reaches into every age group and every kind of family. It is our job to make sure no families have to write these letters or bear this pain ever again. We must address this epidemic, but how can we make the biggest difference in the short time we have left this year? We should not place limitations on what we can achieve in this session. We all have our priorities and we all want action. But I want to talk about several bills that have already been introduced and discussed, and in some cases even passed by one of the chambers here. We need to get them to my desk so that I can sign them and we can make progress, more progress in this fight. If we continue to work together, we can fight back against this epidemic in a very effective way. We must act now. Many Pennsylvania families are counting on us. So first, Physicians should check the Commonwealth's prescription drug monitoring program each time they prescribe opioids and other controlled substances. Our current law is not strong enough. It only requires doctors to check the system the first time they prescribe to a patient, or if they believe a patient is suffering from the disease of addiction. Pharmacists should enter data into the database within 24 hours of issuing a prescription, rather than the current 72 hours. Strengthening program requirements is imperative in helping doctors, and pharmacists identify whether patients are doctor shopping or other doctors are overprescribing patients. State officials also need the tools to identify inappropriate prescribing and dispensing practices among healthcare providers to better crack down on abuse. Second, let's prepare doctors and physicians for prescribing opioids and pain management by improving medical school and continuing education curricula on opioids. This will give doctors the knowledge and best practices needed to tailor their clinical skills 
to identify signs of addiction and provide patients with the information to avoid abuse or engage in meaningful treatment if they become addicted. Third, let's limit the amount of opioids a patient can receive at emergency rooms at, to a seven-day supply with no refills. And we should put the same restriction in place for minors no matter where they get a prescription. We've all heard too many stories, too many horror stories about high school athletes whose futures are robbed by addiction that begins with prescription painkillers. Of course, those suffering from crippling pain need relief, and we must be careful to protect the ability of sufferers of long-term pain or victims of trauma to receive appropriate medication. Fourth, let's require insurance companies to cover abuse deterrent opioids, similar to what they already have in Massachusetts. This will make it more difficult to abuse prescription drugs. While many people become addicted simply by swallowing pills, others crush pills to snort or smoke them. Drug manufacturers are rapidly developing new technologies to prevent this kind of abuse. Some of these drugs are uncrushable, even with a hammer, while others are formulated with naloxone so that the more an individual takes, the less effective it is in creating a high and limiting the potential for overdose. Others turn into a gel when they're crushed, making them impossible to put into a syringe to inject. These deterrent measured measures, if crafted properly, can be important tools against intentional or unintentional abuse or overdose. Lastly, several new bills deserve our consideration. Two bills require schools to teach students about opioid misuse in existing drug and alcohol uh, abuse curricula. Another bill would allow patients to establish a voluntary directive if they do not want to be prescribed opioids. The point is that the time for action is now. As many have noted, and as I said earlier, 3,500 Pennsylvanians lost their lives to addiction in 2015 alone. That means that each year, we're losing the population of Parksburg, Freeland, or Mifflinburg to the disease of addiction. And each year, those numbers grow. The opioid epidemic did not start overnight, and we will not fix it overnight or even in this session. But by acting on these bills and by putting other ideas on the table, we can continue to stem the tide of opioid abuse in Pennsylvania. We can make progress for the families we've met, the parents who have cried on our shoulders. Here in this building, we can make a difference, right now, with bills that are close to passage. In my inaugural address, I acknowledged that some people out there feel indifference toward their government. In the past two years, we haven't always improved uh, that, that perception. But in the past several months, we've solved some big problems here, working together. Many of these issues have vexed Pennsylvania's elected leaders for generations. It's a start, and we have more work to do. But with the most Republican legislature in modern history and a Democratic governor, we've balanced the budget, we've increased education funding, we've passed a fair funding formula, we've brought medical marijuana to suffering kids, and we've reformed the liquor system. The magnitude of the opioid crisis threatens to cast a shadow over all of these important accomplishments and everything else we work to achieve in this building. But it's also a calling to use our time and our energy to fix a problem touching far too many Pennsylvanians. The crisis calls on us to cast aside partisanship once again. It calls on us to reject cynicism once again. It calls on us to take action once again. Families in Philadelphia, in Brockway, in Indiana, in Allegheny County, in State College, in Mount Wolf, and all across Pennsylvania are calling on us to act. We have shown that we can work together to make Pennsylvania the great place we know it can be. It's now time to do that again and give the people of Pennsylvania a reason to believe in their leaders. It's up to us to tackle the opioid crisis and give Pennsylvania the prosperous, healthy, and safe future we know it deserves. I look forward to a productive session and real progress towards stopping the opioid epidemic. Let us, here in Pennsylvania, lead the nation in fighting this crisis. Let's guess, get this done. Thank you very much. Thank you.